Hello viewers, welcome to this video. In this video, you are going to learn how to schedule a set of process using a combination of priority scheduling along with round robin scheduling algorithm. So why should we use round robin algorithm along with priority scheduling? So there may be a situation where among a set of process, few process may have equal priority. So to handle that situation, we have to go with either first come first served algorithm or round robin scheduling algorithm along with priority scheduling. It's because, say for example, among six process, three process have priority two. So how should we handle these three priorities bearing equal priority? So either we can make use of first come first serve algorithm based on the arrival time of these process or else we can go with round robin scheduling algorithm so that it will reduce the waiting time of the process. If we go with first come first serve then only after completing one process then it will go to the next process. So instead of that we can go with round robin scheduling algorithm so that based on a time quantum it will schedule the process which have the same priority. Instead of FCFS, you can make use of round robin scheduling if the set of process has equal priority. Let us consider the same set of process and the and its priority. So first, as usual here, P4 gets uh, started and completes its execution. So it completes at 7 millisecond. Then you have uh, priority number 2 given for P2 and P3. So you can start off with uh, process 2. So here you, uh, a time quantum will be given. If you make use of round robin then you have to make use of time quantum. So the time quantum given here is 2 milliseconds. So P2 first executes for 2 milliseconds. Then it moves to P3. Okay, so 7 plus 2 9, it moves to P3, so executes for 2 milliseconds, so 9 plus 2 11, then again it goes back to process P2 because it has to complete, only 2 milliseconds has been completed here, okay, so remaining 3 milliseconds are there for process P2, similarly remaining 6 milliseconds are there for process P3, so until it gets completed, this, uh, uh, this uh, fashion will happen, circular fashion will repeat. So again it moves to P2, so 11 to 11 plus 2, 13, so it executes for P2, then it moves to P3, so 13 plus 2, 15, then again, so here 2 milliseconds, then here 2 milliseconds, so 4 milliseconds is completed, remaining only 1 millisecond, so P2 executes for 1 milliseconds, then immediately it moves to P3, okay. So now P3 won't execute, see uh, how many milliseconds are there for P3? So, P3 has executed for 4 milliseconds. So, so, here 2 and then here 2 milliseconds. Okay, So, totally 4 milliseconds has completed. Remaining 4 milliseconds are there. So, here uh, since time quantum is 2 milliseconds, it does not mean that it will execute only 2, 2 milliseconds. Okay? Remaining 4 milliseconds will be taken by or it, the P3 will complete its execution. Since P2 has completed, so P3 will completes it, uh, its execution by taking 4 milliseconds at a stretch. So now at 28 millisecond P3 has completed its execution. So now it will move to process P1 and P5 since both these process has same priority. Okay. So if you look into this, now P1 gets started with same 2 milliseconds as time quantum. So P1 executes for 2 milliseconds, then it moves to P5. Then executes for 2 milliseconds. So P1 has completed 2 milliseconds. Then P5 for uh, 2 milliseconds. Okay. So P1 still 2 milliseconds remaining. So here again CPU will be allocated to process P1. So it completes its execution for 2 milliseconds. So here again 2. Then then it goes to P5, 
whereas for b5 already two completed so only one is remaining so p minus 2 it is 1 millisecond so it completes its execution by taking 1 milliseconds so in this fashion you can make use of priority and round robin scheduling and then complete the execution of the process if the process has same priority now let us look into the waiting time of the process waiting and turnaround time so for process p1 see p1 has started only here okay that is after 20th millisecond so its waiting time is 20 milliseconds then it's see its turnaround time it is 26 millisecond okay only at the 26 millisecond p1 has completed its execution so turnaround time is 26 p1 it is 20 So here it is 26 not 24, so P1 has completed at 26 millisecond. Now if you look into P2, so P2 has started at 70 millisecond, students so for p1 see if you look into process p1 so up to 20 milliseconds it has waited and it has executed only two seconds here two milliseconds then again it has waited for two milliseconds then it has completed its execution here so 20 plus 2 20 so here up to 20 milliseconds then again here so here again two milliseconds so it is 22 milliseconds If you consider P2, so it has started here 7, then it has executed for 2 milliseconds, then again it has waited for 2 milliseconds here, then again another 2 milliseconds, so 7 plus 2 plus 2, so it is 11 milliseconds. So it is not 7, it is 11 milliseconds. Then, but its completion time, see, so its completion time is when it has completed P2, completed at, I think I have not modified this table, yes. So, if you look into P2, it has completed only at 16th milliseconds, okay. So the turnaround time of P2 is 16. Now let us look into process P3. If you look into process P3, it has waited until 9 milliseconds and then got its uh, turn from CPU. So executed for 2 milliseconds, then waited for 2 milliseconds again because it has been switched over to CPU has moved to process uh, P2 due to round robin scheduling. So here 9 then again here 2 so 9 plus 2 it is 11 then again here again it has to wait for 2 milliseconds so 11 plus 2 it is 13 milliseconds then about the completion time so p3 has completed at 20th millisecond so it is, this is correct okay so 20 then uh, about p4 so, since P4 has the highest priority, it has started and completed its execution at a stretch. So, waiting time is 0 and then its turnaround time is 7. Now, let us look into the last process P5. So, P5 has started its execution only after 20 second, at the 23rd millisecond. So, it has waited up to 22nd millisecond milliseconds okay 22 milliseconds then it has complete 22 then again so it has uh, executed for 2 milliseconds then again it has wa uh, waited for 2 other uh, milliseconds 
so that it uh, the cpu will be released from p1 okay so 20 here 22 then plus here and that 2 so totally 24 milliseconds okay so it has waited for 24 milliseconds completion time it is 27 okay so now let us calculate the total and average waiting time and turnaround time so 22 plus 7 33 33 plus uh, 13 46 46 plus 24 i think it is 70 okay so 70 by 5 So it is, we think, uh, um, so 12 point something. I think uh, so one twenty is there. So fourteen. Sorry, not twelve. It is fourteen. Okay. So fourteen milliseconds. If you consider turnaround time, twenty-six plus sixteen, so forty-two plus twenty, sixty-two plus seven, sixty-nine, then plus twenty-seven, so eighty-nine, uh, ninety-six. Okay, so ninety-six by five. So it is. I think it is nineteen point two. So one five or five, what is nine five or forty five? So it is nineteen point two. So nineteen point two milliseconds. Okay. So like this, either you can make use of the FCFS or round robin. Okay. So if you compare the waiting time and turnaround time with round robin and FCFS. So average waiting time is for 14 milliseconds for uh, 14 milliseconds, and then the average turnaround time is 19.2. If you uh, consider the same for uh, the previous algorithm, that is uh, previous combination, so it is 12.6 and 18, which is uh, Uh, it will be higher than the FCFS combination. Okay, so it is better to make use of FCFS than round robin. In the next video, let me introduce you to page replacement algorithms, which are used in operating systems to manage the memory in an effective manner. Thank you for watching this video.